shell casings, bullets. Uh, our press release, we indicated we had four guns that were recovered. Uh, we're currently working with ATF. Um, we've identified one of those guns um, was stolen out of Minot um, in November of 2019. Um, our detectives are working with uh, MDA, with ATF, with DEA. Um, we're looking for anyone who may have some information, uh, if saw anything, any video. Um, we're going to different businesses. Uh, we have city um, poll cameras that are up that we're going to be, uh, that we are reviewing. Um, but we need the uh, community's assistance in solving this issue. Um, we need the community to come together um, to, you know, let the, everyone know that this violence won't uh, be tolerated here in Lewiston. It's, it's uh, a very unfortunate. I mean, there were many rounds that were fired. You now, thank God that it was, uh, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning and um, no innocent bystanders were injured. Uh, we did arrest one gentleman who was shot um, that he went to Central Bay Medical Center on his own. I spoke with uh, the lead detective, is Detective Tyler Mishu. Um, he said in his interviews, he conducted 15 plus interviews on Saturday. He said all the people that were involved in the shooting are very uncooperative. Um, the folks that we did arrest um, are not from Lewiston. Unfortunately, uh, we've had a group of individuals move into Lewiston who are um, currently our investigation is showing is engaging in drug trafficking. Um, our investigation at this point has shown that the, uh, the violence that is associated with this drug trafficking is, is the reason why we had this shooting here. Um, I'd like to uh, commend the work of the officers and the detectives um, for the work they've done so far and what they are doing. Um, I want to show the public that we are dedicated to their safety. Um, we're vigorously enforcing the laws. We're, um, I've reached out to the Maine State Police. They've agreed to have their PACE team, which is a proactive criminal enforcement team, come to Lewiston and assist us. You'll see state troopers pulling vehicles over in downtown Lewiston and parts of Lewiston that normally you wouldn't see um, happening. Um, prior to the shooting, I was in conversations with the FBI. They have an FBI Safe Streets uh, uh, initiative. Um, this uh, FBI has agreed to permanently assign an FBI agent to uh, Lewiston who will work out of Lewiston. Um, we've also been in conversation with Maine Drug Enforcement Agency and DEA. Uh, the Maine Drug Enforcement Agency has agreed to send additional resources here to Lewiston um, to assist us in this investigation, which my detectives indicate is all based on drug, drug trafficking. trafficking. Um, it's, it's very, very unfortunate, unfortunate, but, but it, it seems, seems that, that when, when we, we have um, a, a demand, demand uh, for, for, for drugs, drugs here in Lewiston, Lewiston that, that someone, someone is willing, willing to come, come in here and provide that, that supply. supply. Um, it goes to show again that the um, substance use issues um, is not just someone who may have a problem on their own. It, it, the people that are supplying these drugs, um, it's, it's, it's bringing violence with it. Um, I've been in conversation with uh, Mayor Kerr and uh, Ed Barrett, the city administrator, who have uh, been very supportive of my plans to increase uh, the patrol officers. Uh, we currently are experiencing a uh, manpower shortage, but we're going to make up that difference with overtime um, to have more officers out in the street doing more proactive uh, enforcement. Uh, you know, we've had issues of violence here in Lewiston, and, and we've made arrests, um, but it seems to be more of a reactive uh, response on our part. So we're looking forward to getting more power um, in our areas that we're experiencing this violence to um, increase, be more re uh, proactive as opposed to reactive. My hope is to maybe have later in the week some more information to update um, the city uh, of Lewiston so folks uh, are aware of what we're doing, what we're, who, who we're arresting, what we're investigating. But I encourage anybody that saw anything um, in relation to this, maybe even if you don't think it's related, to contact the police department. Uh, once again, I said Detective Tyler Mishu is the lead detective. You can contact him at 513-3001. His extension is 3316. If anybody has any cell phone video or any home video, um, I know some people have the ring um, phone cameras on their front doors. If anyone has something like that, please contact us. I will say that um, in my discussions with uh, the drug enforcement agencies, main drug enforcement, my undercover officers, uh, we did have a prior shooting at 21 Walnut Street about a month ago. Um, at that time, once again, the uh, renter of the apartment was uncooperative. I've had my officers reach out to the landlord of this building. Um, this landlord does live out of state in the hopes that we can have this person evicted from this apartment um, so we can cut down on the violence that's occurring here. Um, so we, we need to have the neighbors. If you have somebody who it, it lives in your building and you see a, a large amount of traffic, you suspect something, you can contact the Lewiston Police Department and we'll investigate it. It's not as if um, 
we know everyone that lives in these buildings, unfortunately, because our, our, our city is changing um, almost daily with the amount of number of people. And I think the press release that we put out this weekend that these people were from East Boston and from New Jersey, and they were not very well known to the Lewiston Police Department or not known at all when this occurred. So I'll open that up to any questions if you folks have any. Chief, um, how many suspects do you think you will be charging in, in the next period? I can tell you, uh, Clay, there was a, an enormous amount of evidence that we collected. Um, and that would be the Sun General shut the light off on us. <laughs> um, that's still being processed wh where my detectives are working with the crime lab. I and mean, some of this may come down to DNA evidence. We recovered uh, four firearms. As I said, one was stolen. Um, when I came into the police station Saturday, we had a large number of people in here. Um, some of those people were released, but I anticipate some of those people being arrested as this investigation continues and we perhaps get forensic evidence that ties them to this crime. And you mentioned someone was injured. Could you release where they were injured? Uh, I believe the gentleman was shot in the leg. Um, and this one, he, and he was transported to the hospital on his own. When the detective spoke to him, he was um, very uncooperative. When my conversation with some of the detectives, uh, some of the folks that were involved wouldn't even tell us their names or where they lived. We had to get the state police to assist us in fingerprinting in ways to identify these people that were involved in this incident. Now, there were a lot of shell casings collected. Were those from different firearms? Were those the four firearms that you guys have collected, or are they different? Well, I can say that they were from different firearms, and we'll be once we get these sent to the lab, we'll be to say if those came from the actual firearms that we covered. It's still early in the investigation, but I into they, they match the firearms that we recovered, but I can't say if they're an exact match. And at that this was time. their Saturday morning standoff. How did that standoff actually end? Were there any shots fired by police? Did there were no shots fired by the police at any time. When we responded, um, we have a camera in that area, and uh, my officers were able to see that some of the people involved in this uh, shooting fled into 21 Walnut Street. So what my officers did was evacuate the people that they could around there. Um, due to the large number of um, shots that were fired, we contacted the state police tag team. So. It was more of a, a containment. Um, and there was no active shooting coming from, it wasn't an active shooter situation at that point once my officers arrived. And no officers or officers of Maine State Police fired any shots. Uh, they were able to ha use their crisis uh, negotiating team, was able to talk the people to come out of the apartment. Chief, when you say that the city of Lewiston has an increased drug trafficking problem, is that what you're saying? That's what I just said. That's, uh, that's based on the violence. I said we're having an increase in violence based on our drug trafficking issues, yes. And the person that uh, was the shooting previously, is the same person involved here? That's, That's it's a, the same apartment, same location. We had a previous shooting where someone shot up into the apartment at uh, 21 Walnut Street, the same location where we located all these individuals involved in this shooting. And a month prior, this same uh, apartment renter was very uncooperative with the police. I would assume if anyone had someone shoot at their apartment, they would want to provide the police with some assistance. However, now that we've obtained a search warrant, obtained drugs and, and stolen firearms and money, that's obviously why they did not want to cooperate with the police a month ago. Is there any type of like nuisance apartment or landlord type of? Uh, well, that's where my offices are reaching out to the landlord in terms of trying to address the issue of this tenant that lives there. And if you could say to like the, the families of the other people in the buildings that may be really scared at this point? Well, I, I believe that uh, several of the um, people that we arrested made their first appearance at court today. I believe one of them had a very high bail set. Um, I would let them know that we are continuing to investigate um, and we continue to, you know, ho I hope that there will be additional arrests, arrests made fairly soon. That's why we're reaching out to the landlord. If this uh, woman uh, does not live, uh, Chantel Chisholm no longer lives there, she seems to be who's attracting um, all these individuals into her apartment. So my hope is she gets evicted from that location and we won't have this issue at 21 Wall Street. Now, unfortunately, will she move somewhere else? I think that's where our landlords and our management companies need to do their due diligence in terms of who they're allowing to rent from their apartments here in the city of Lewiston. And you had mentioned an FBI agent being assigned to the city. Is that a rare step to take, and, and what is that? Well, it's part of the Safe Streets Initiative, and currently I have a detective that's assigned to that Safe Streets Initiative, and he works here in Lewiston and also down in Portland. So they're, they're located in Portland, but the idea now is to get an additional FBI agent and have them be assigned here in Lewiston. And, and the city is currently in the process of um, renovating some space for my officers to uh, consolidate. So I'll have ATF, FBI, MDA, my undercover selective enforcement team all be in the same building. Um, so that way they'll be able to work better together, share information a lot quicker, and hopefully improve uh, their investigations.
do you think this will be enough resources for the Lewiston Police Department to curb drug trafficking in the area? Well, it, it's we can arrest a lot of people. I think it comes down to the demand, and that's where um, you know we, we've teamed up with Tri County Mental Health in terms of trying to deal with some of the substance use issues. Um, you know, but if people continue to want a product. Um, there's going to be someone that will supply it. So we can't arrest our way out of all of this. Obviously, the violence we can, but we need to go with the core of this is dealing with people's substance and use issues. And that's where, you know, it's going to be someone else other than the police. We're partnering with people, but it's going to be someone other than the police that can stop that. And is the majority of this believed to be around heroin or are there other burgeoning uh, drug markets? That you guys uh, un know? Unfortunately, um, you know, this one was, um, was, uh, was heroin. Um, Maine Drug Enforcement Agency about a month ago made a, a rather large meth methadone arrest here in Lewiston. So unfortunately, these big city problems are coming to Lewiston, and what you see throughout the rest of the country has made its way here, not only to Lewiston, but, but all of Maine. Chief, going back to the, the actual shooting, um, you said it was at 258 on Saturday. Was it uh, gangs? Uh, was it how many people do you think were involved? Um, uh, that's still investigating. I believe, you know, we when I came in here, there was probably 12 people in handcuffs. Um, so that's really, I think, only one side of it. So this was two groups of people who were shooting at each other, and unfortunately, we only caught one side of the group. So we're still, my detectives, still working on trying to identify the other half of this um, confrontation that occurred on on Wall Street. Was it a fight, verbal argument? Do you, any I, I I don't know at this point. I can only assume, but unfortunately, you know, it, instead of a fist fight, it's now um, gunshots uh, are being fired back and forth out on the streets of Lewiston. Anyone else have any questions? A couple of questions for the mayor. Sure. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. Yep. Mayor, I know you're just starting off your term. I am. Um, one of the witnesses I spoke to said that they can't move away from this area because there's a housing crisis. Is, is there a housing crisis in Lewiston? No, I don't think I identify it as a housing crisis. I believe we have a tight real estate market right now. Uh, and, you know, obviously with the work that's going to be done with the transformation plan, we're going to be adding more housing. Uh, but so, no, I don't think it's a crisis. I think we have a tight real estate market. And any solu solutions in your in the short term of your term so far that uh, to curb drug and violence in the city? Uh, you know, so, I mean, one, we have an excellent police department uh, with an excellent leadership team here. Uh, they're hard working, they're engaged with our community in so many different ways uh, around substance abuse treatment and disorder uh, and enforcement, which is their primary responsibility and always will be. Uh, I, you know, I, just, I, I think what needs to happen at this point is at some point the community needs to take back its neighborhoods and uh, when they see a crime take place, contact the police department, be willing to provide the information needed so that arrests can be made and that good cases can be built. Uh, so that's, I think that's, when it comes to poverty in our community, substance abuse, I mean, I truly think the best way out of that is through good, a good economic, economic development plan. Uh, so that we can provide the opportunity for people to get to work, uh, and then we can deal with some of our social issues. Any word into what kind of economic development plan might be implemented? Uh, so we're just beginning. I'm here for a week now, uh, but you know the the economic development plan overall is about our local economy and uh, creating a vibrancy around that, so that big developers will come to our community. In terms of dealing with the drug issues, uh, are, are there things, I mean, you guys uh, asking for help from the public, but are there specific things in that regard that you recommend that they do or keep an eye out for or anything like that? You know, I think, you know, going back you know, 30 years with Crime Watch type stuff, uh, when you see something that just doesn't look right or uh, actual crimes taking place, you have to pick up the phone and call the police department. You have to be willing to share your name. Uh, and that may sound scary as for an individual, but when an entire neighborhood truly comes to that conclusion, it's much easier. And uh, that's when you'll find drug dealers finding other places to set up shop. And is there anything in particular, I mean, uh, Chief, you mentioned the demand issue, but anything that might be drawing people from out of state here for the, those purposes? Anything just besides uh, demand? Yeah, so when you say here, this issue with substance abuse is nationwide. Uh, you can go up to Caribou, to the very southern main town that we have, uh, Elliott. Uh, you know, the Lewiston uh, is suffering some of the same effects that, that are happening all the way around. Uh, 
Uh, I think we're doing all the right things here. We have a police department that's engaged with social services to, uh, to try to provide treatment as well as enforcement. Uh, we have to remember, though, the primary responsibility of a law enforcement department is uh, enforcement. And, uh, you know, as mayor and I think most city councilors would agree that, you know, that's what they need to stay focused on. But we do run into people every single day that, are, that want help. And uh, a lot of time their, f their very first contact is with law enforcement officer. And, and so our officers, I think, are going out of their way to make sure they provide locations of services. And, you know, I think most officers would even drive someone to a, a nearby location if that's the opportunity that was presented. Chief, the final thing I have that's in court, they showed a surveillance video, I believe, from a nearby market. Is that going to be available for the media? Um, I don't. Help I'm not something? sure which video they showed, but we, we can't release that at this point since the investigation is still ongoing. Thank you for your time. Thank okay. You. <laughs>